All right, let's look at our first activity for week eight. Um, again, we're checking out uh, four resistor series circuits, and our goal this week in particular is to verify Ohm's law uh, throughout the circuit. And so we, we're going to do that by measuring the voltage on each component and then measuring the current in each component. So let's take a look at our setup here. Uh, we've got our Uno 32. Um, the four resistors you've been asked to set up ahead of time, this is set up a little bit differently. And then I've got some spare wires here on the right that we'll use to finish our wiring. We're also going to need our voltage and current meter that will get arranged. All right, so back to the circuit here. Again, what we want to have set up is our voltage source driving our four resistors in series to complete our um, current loop. So. This voltage source is going to be our UNO32, and then we're going to have these four resistors, and the ones we've got are just around 500 ohms, so we're going to have four of them in series. Let's go ahead and set this circuit up so that we can take the measurements we need. So the resistors, I've got them set up, I'll use this here, so that there's a little space in between them. I'm going to use jumpers, that'll make some of our measurements a little bit easier. And So we've got uh, resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3 and then resistor 4 and they are separated on the breadboard. If you haven't watched the How the Breadboard Works video from Parallax in the reference materials you should do so. So let's go ahead and connect them up in series. And so let's connect, start at the left hand side here and I'm going to connect the, those two in series. Again we go out of resistor 1 into the breadboard and then out of the breadboard through the wire and back into the breadboard to the second resistor. Let's go ahead and set up the second connection Again, same thing, and the third connection, same thing. So we've got resistor 1, resistor 2 connected, resistor 3 connected, and then finally resistor 4. So the next step is to connect our voltage and current. So you'll see on the um, UNO32, I've come off the 5 volt power supply and connected it to this rail right here. That is jumpered over to the other rail, so we have plus on both sides has 5 volts on it when we power up the RCX. Out of the ground on the RCX into the opposite side, and then that opposite side is also jumpered over here. So we have negative, we have ground and plus 5 volts on both sides. So now to close the rest of our circuit. So I'll start with the ground, I'm going to plug it into the ground and then connect it to the side of the resistor. All right, so now we need to apply power to the circuit, or voltage to the circuit. So we'll come out of the five volts and plug it into the other resistor. So again, we've got five volts coming in through resistor one, through resistor two, resistor three, and resistor four, and back to negative, which takes you back to the power supply. So this is our circuit that we've got set up. So now let's talk about how we're going to do the measurements. So again, our goal is to verify Ohm's law and measure the voltage and current on each component. All right. So these are the measurements we need to take and the data sheet you'll need to complete. Of course, your data sheet will be in a spreadsheet. Uh, it's shown on the experiment instructions. And we're going to take voltage on the power supply and the current coming out of it. We're going to take voltage across each resistor and the current passing through in between the resistors. We're going to take the voltage on the second resistor and then the current following that one and the voltage on the third and the current following that one. All right, so let's go ahead and this is similar to some of the other measurements we've taken. The key ideas again, the voltages can be measured straight across the device as they're shown here. But the current, we have to break the circuit and rearrange the meter and put it inside the loop. Make it, make it so that the current passes through that meter in whichever spot we're going to put it. So let's do our first measurement of voltage on the power supply and then the current coming out of it. So we're going to measure voltage. I'm going to go ahead and power this up on the 20 volt scale. The <coughs> Uno 32 puts out 5 volts. We're going to use the volt ohms amps scale and then the common. So this is set up to measure DC volts and uh, it's all powered up. So I need to energize my um, Uno 32 to provide power. First thing we should probably check is the voltage. So I'm going to plug in an extra probe here so we can make contact with that. 
and plug in another probe, another wire here, so we can make contact here. So I'm going to touch the 5 volt side and the ground side and check our reading. And in fact, we're getting 5.01 volts. All right. So that, if we record that piece of data real quick, on the UNO32, the power supply is providing 5.01 and our units are volts. Let's take our current measurement. So we need to um, switch. We're going to measure the current near the power supply. We're going to switch it around. And normally you would use the 10 amp scale, but we have a very small current here. So I'm going to switch to the 200 milliamp DC amp scale. And that means I can also use the volt ohms milliamp scale. <coughs> so we want to open the circuit. In this case, we're going to pull up right here. So now there's no power going to the circuit. And we want to put, a, put our meter in with that. So I'm going to grab this end here and I'm going to make contact with the resistor to close the circuit. So now the current that's flowing is 2.7 milliamps. You can see that negative sign. I can change that by changing the probes. I had the current going the wrong way through the meter. So I switched the probes and so now we'll get 2.7 milliamps going out of the power supply into the resistors. Let's record that. Two point seven milliamps. Now you're going to have to calculate what the effective resistance would be on your spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and take another while we're at it, let's make another current measurement. So I'm going to complete the circuit again while our probe while our uh, meter is still in current mode, I'm going to pull loose one of the blue jumpers. So now I'm going to connect from that blue jumper, oops, excuse me, that blue jumper to those resistors. So the current passing through this is also 2.7. So you need to record that bit of data. So now I'm going to jumper that back together. And for this first resistor, we need to measure the voltage. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to switch back to 20 volts and measure the voltage across that resistor. So there's the voltage measurement, and the voltage across it is 1.24 volts. Now again, if I switch the probes, I can change the sign on that. I just arranged it incorrectly. So uh, it's dropping 1.25 volts. So that's the second measurement of voltage, 1.25. So you need to continue this process. I'll go ahead and talk you through it here. So we'll measure the next voltage in this way and then measure the current in this loop. And then we measure the next voltage and measure the current in this loop. And measure the final voltage. And then open up the ground end and measure the current in that. All right, so again, the current measurements are more difficult. Let's do one more of those as a demonstration. So I'm going to switch it to the 200 milliamps because the current draw is small on this. In this case, I'm going to measure the current on this end and keep the power supply hooked up and replace that wire with the meter. All right, so that's another example of the current measurement for this example. All right, so let's put that back together. Our circuit's still in place. And we've collected the data. So again, your team is going to finish out filling out this data and create a calculated cell that figures out what the resistance is based on Ohm's law. But let's demonstrate a quick measurement of the one of the resistors. So again, we did this on a bulb in an earlier video, but let's switch it to measure ohms. In this case, since we said they're about 500, I put it on a 2,000 scale. Let's pull out one of those resistors and touch the probes to each side of it. So again, in this case, we said about 500, and in fact, they're 462, this one is. So you should check them all to see how much variation there is. Let's put that circuit back together. Okay, the circuit's restored. And let's take a look at our next piece that we want to do. So, we did the 
the um, four resistor circuit. Now let's take out one of the resistors and then complete the single voltage measurement and current measurement on the power supply. And so let's do a quick example of that. So I'm going to pull out one of the resistors and its jumper and then we want to close the circuit. So we only have three resistors. All right. Then what we want you to do is measure the voltage on the supply and the current that it's providing. Similar, same thing we did in the first step of the four resistor circuit. Once you've done that, pull out the next resistor and its jumper and close the circuit for just two resistors. Complete the voltage and current measurements and then pull out that, that last resistor and its jumper wire and do just a single resistor circuit. Do a voltage and current measurements there. Once you've done that, you're done with the series circuit measurements and then you can move on to the parallel circuit measurements. All right, so for the second part of week eight, we're going to, again, use Ohm's Law to explore a parallel circuit. And in class, after you're done with series, you'll set up a circuit of four resistors all in parallel, like this. Again, the parallel circuit is kind of uh, intuitive as you look at it here, because each one of these resistors is in parallel with the other. Now, electrically, it's not always this simple in, in appearance, but today it should be pretty close. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this up, and then we're all, then I'm, in the process of setting it up, we're going to set it up so that we can take the voltage measurements on each component easily and take a current measurement on each component easily. So let's take a look at our circuit setup first. So you can see here we've got the four resistors installed and I've got them connected uh, into a column of the uh, breadboard and going down to the negative or ground of the uh, breadboard. So the same is true for all of them. They all start at negative and go out onto the board so they be, can be connected elsewhere. So let's go ahead and make that connection. So the first thing to notice is we've got the plus coming in and of course it is jumpered around across to the other side. So we want to take from the first positive and connect to the top of the first resistor. All right, so that's five volts to the top of the first resistor. The second one, connect it here to the top of the first resistor. The third, again from five volts to the top of the third resistor. And our final fourth one, plugged in to the top of the first resistor. So again, our five volts comes in, jumpered over, and gets provided to each of the resistors. On the bottom side of the resistors, they're connected directly to our ground, which is comes in from the Uno 32 and gets jumpered over here to both of the blue portions of the breadboard. So this is our parallel circuit. It's actually being powered right now because I left it plugged in. Um, so now we need to go ahead and start taking our measurements. Let's take one more look at our sketch. So let's make this first measurement. We're going to measure the voltage coming from the power supply of the Uno 32 and then the current being delivered to this circuit. So again, we'll set up the voltage at 20 volts maximum and the volt ohm scale and the common. So let's take our probes and we've got it set up with an extra wire coming out so we can take that measurement on plus 5 and ground and looking at our voltage measurements, 4.99. Let me slide that in a little closer here so we can see it while we're working. One more time here. Taking that measurement of the voltage source, 4.99. And again, you can have a data sheet for that. So let me pull that over here. And it's very similar to what we've been doing. So on the voltage source, we had uh, 4.99. And again, volts. Let's switch it up and measure current. Again, because we are working with very low currents off the uh, with these resistors, uh, we're going to switch it to DC amps, and because it's low current, we can keep the volt ohm milliamp scale here. Now, the current we want to measure is an important location, is we want to measure it as it feeds the other side. So I'm going to disconnect, oh actually, no, that's not the one I wanted to make, my mistake. We're going to take the power supply free and measure 
the current going from here into the rails of the thing. So again, we've got the meter set up correctly. I'll touch one side and then the other. And our current being fed right now is 96.4 milliamps. So let's record that. 96.4, and again, that is milliamps. And I want to restore the power supply Circ to the circuit. All right, so that's it. So that's our first piece of data. Let's go ahead and take one more piece of data, and then you guys can repeat the rest in class. Let's take the voltage on the first resistor. Switching them back to voltage. 20 volts range, volt ohms milliamps, and I'm going to touch the lower side and the upper side of the resistor to measure the voltage across it. And again, that voltage reading, 4.99. Move the wire out of the way here. There we go, that's better. Let's do this one more time. Measuring the voltage across the device, the component, we've got 4.98. All right, and to measure the current, as well, switching back to 200 milliamps, Let's pull free one of the wires and make the connection from here to here. So this component is using 10.7 milliamps. Again, I've got the wiring backwards if I switch my probes. Instead of negative, I'll get the positive. So 10.7, 10.8, it fluctuates in between. So let's record those two pieces of data. Again, the voltage on resistor 1 was 4.99, and the current was 10.8. So in, in class, you'll finish taking the voltage and current measurements on number 2, voltage and current measurements on 3, and the voltage and current measurements on 4. Again, your spreadsheet will have to calculate the resistance values for each one of these and then actually measure, you repeat your same measurements, uh, they'll be unchanged for the actual value of the resistance. All right, that brings us to a close here. One last thing I want to mention on this is that, again, you'll have to add your resistance values, but when you're reviewing your data, we want to make sure you have some understanding. So we want you to think about, did you confirm Ohm's law? Does the law work? And what are the observations you can make about series and parallel circuits? When you're doing that, make sure and consider how did the currents change in a series circuit compared to how they changed in a parallel circuit, and how did the voltages change in the series and parallel circuits? All right, so that brings us to a close for weeks eight and nine. Uh, excuse me, weeks eight. In week nine, we'll apply Ohm's law to a more complicated circuit and uh, learn how to control devices. That brings us to an end.